How goes it, folks? It's the dude here with another unboxing for Therefore I Geek in this episode of Unboxing on the Red Ottoman with Smeagol. So today, uh, is episode is about the unboxing of Compass Games, the American Revolution, Commands and Colors Tricorn. I was actually at my local game store yesterday with not really having any intention of getting something until the clerk there told me about this new game. Now, Commands and Colors System is a system that's been around for a while since the game Battle Cry, and it's actually one of my favorite systems for tactical war games, and if you can't tell, you can see right here, here's a group of boxes for games that I own. Now, kind of the gold standard has been Command and Color Ancients, and the game is designed by, this whole system is owned by Richard Borg. The next system that came along that I was familiar with was Commands and Colors Napoleonics, which is my personal favorite one. Not only do I have this box core set, I actually have all six of the expansions. Now, these both are historical games. You can go out into more of a fantasy world. Um, this game, Battle Lore Second Edition, also designed by Richard Borg, was souped up by Fantasy Flights. And then you have kind of offshoot styles that are very similar to Ars Victor. So if you can't tell, I really, really, really enjoy this as a gaming system. So, I basically didn't hesitate in buying this game when I was told it came out. And it's, it's very, very recent. And unlike other Commands and Colors games that have the official moniker on them that are done by GMT, this is done by Compass Games. And you can almost tell instantly the difference because of the production value. I've always liked Commands and Colors and GMT games for the rules and, and the kind of straightforward simplicity and how to play but then you get kind of art and production value like uh, this on the left that looks like they got a high school art student to do it to be fair when they started to go into like source material or error specific paintings for Napoleonics that looked quite nice but you could see the difference between the production value of something like battle lore and something like commands and colors Ancients. Now, that being said, let's just get right into this. Let's see what we have in the box. I'm really quite interested in seeing what we have here, so we'll use our trusty little kitchen knife. I haven't even broken this elephant. Sometimes I do that before. Come on, you. There. Alright, very excited. It's okay, Smeagol. Yes, the seal is broken. Want to hold on to that for me? Good boy. Alright, so let's take a look at this. Big box! Thick! Feels like it's about 3-4 inches. That opened very easily. That's not normally the case with these big box games. That opened very easily, okay. Thick box. Very, very thick box. Beautiful artwork. Just great, great, great artwork. Let's put this aside. Okay, let's see what's inside here. Blocks! Lots of blocks, you get it, Smeal. Which is pretty much standard fare for any Commands and Colors war game. Blocks, blocks, blocks. So we have, let's see, light blue, we have dark blue, and we have red. So you, reds are almost, you know, certainly British. Light blue is probably American. Dark blue? Maybe French? French have always been traditionally dark blue. Let's see. And another big, big, big box of blocks. These look like more like infantry and uh, cavalry cubes. You can kind of tell the difference. Just because of my familiar... Come on. Focus. Just because of my familiarity with the system, I can tell these right here are going to be infantry... Uh, yeah, cavalry cubes. These right here, these are going to be infantry cubes. These are probably artillery cubes and general cubes. Okay. Blocks. That, that is going to be fun to play stickies with. Okay, so here we have Compass Games. We have news, pre-order games, recent releases, special offers. Oh, kind of got a little folding right here. Now, I am not familiar with Compass Games, so this is actually a nice little thing to have in there. This is just basically a brochure. You spent nearly $100, over $100 on this game, so uh, how about you spend some more money with us? Okay. Let's 
put that over here. All right, what should we look at next? We have command cards. Command cards. Not nothing to discriminate these two. So they may have just kind of separated them so they can fit in the box. Basic kind of commands here from very familiar if you've played these games, Probe Center. And these are kind of the moves. You have your left, your middle, and your right. And basically what this means is you can move two units in the center. At the end, draw one command card. Or they're really spelling it out for you. These are command cards. Let's Maybe I'll open those in a second. Dice Little. These are cute. And they're already set up for you. Normally, you would have to sticky the dice. Let's just take a look here. So, similar to the way they have the Napoleonic one, let's just pull her out just a little bit so we can see that, because that's, that, that's an artillery piece. Come on, there we go. So this, this usually means if you are attacking artillery, this is a hit on artillery. The standard cross sabers. This is a hit on cavalry. A forced retreat, hit on infantry. Yeah, that's basically it. Let's see, do they usually have double infantry hits? No, it's, um... Oh, they have, oh, that's what it is. It's double double bounce backs. Now, in Napoleonics, you would have a double um, infantry hit, but you have a double bounce back. Interesting. But they're not already ready for you. You don't have their pre... Actually, these are not even sticky. These are, these are printed on there. Okay, that's really nice. Ah, here we go, board. Now this is the important part, is is this kind of the cardboard, like, oak tag that they gave you in Ancient Sword's mounted map board. It is legit mounted map board. Look at that. Compass Games, your standard hexes. All right, watch out, Smiggle, because this is going to get, this is going to get big. Oh, holy moly. This is huge. <laughs> Yeah, but standard size for this game. Uh, blank, sorry, Smeagol. Now you can see the dots right here. This is how they break the game down. This is would be your left, your center, and then over here is your right. The, the uh, dotted hashes are the demarcation lines. And it's nice. They don't have a kind of, oh, they do have some. Right there in the center it says, you might not be able to see it, commands and colors, tricorn. Oh my god. This is fantastic. Excellent. Very good. That was one of my big complaints about Commanders and Colors Ancients was the board was kind of prone to flexing because it wasn't this heavy-duty mountain map board. Napoleonics fixed that. Battle Lore fixed that. Oh, I mean, a whole bunch of the other games went to mountain map board. That's the way it should be. Ooh, what do we got here? Instructions. Nice. It's fairly thick. An explanation of uh, your units. What do we have here? Red coats. Looks like we have guard and elite infantry. Oh, there we go. Guard and elite infantry. Grenadier elite infantry. Highlanders. Regular infantry. You gonna leave Smeagol? That's cool. Here's your regulars. Your light infantry. Provisional infantry. Militia. Light cavalry. Uh, light field artillery. Leaders. I like this. I like this. Let's take a look. So this is usually... Explains what you got in the game. The blocks, and this usually explains what the blocks are, who goes on what and how many. And then here we get into the thick meat of the rules. Abilities, this, this is good. How the game turns break down, and then what everything hap what happens, your victory banners to win the game. Where are my scenarios? Here they are. What do we have here? Just Bunker Hill. See, it's very, it's very simple. They give you tiles to create the terrain. They show you exactly where the armies go, and then it's up to you. Give you a nice brief blurb on the battle. Who's doing what? Here's the Continental Army, the British Army. Five command cards for each. The content only goes first. Six degree banners. And the special rules opening cannonade rules are in effect. Ooh, I can't wait to find out what that is. Awesome. And of course, it is not a war game without charts. 
two for each player, essential, and here they are. The stickies. Come here, you. Ooh, sheets and sheets of stickies. Okay, so these are the terrain. Let's take a look at the stickies. Now here's something to notice. How good the artwork is here on the stickers. Now, I, I, again, I love GMT. I'm not going to knock them too hard, but the, the, the artwork on the stickers leaves a bit to be desired. The artwork here for Compass, this is pretty good. Come on. Here, this isn't bad at all. So we have a number of one, five sheets total. Hmm. I don't know what these are for. Alright. This is one of those moments where you just get the blocks, you get the stickies, you put something on a Netflix, and you just stick away. Here we go. These are the terrain punch outs, the tiles for the terrain. A lot of this is rivers. Looks these looks like fortifications and some swamp. And the continental flag. What's on the back? Ah, there's the Union Jack. I think these look like roads. These look like roads. These would be the victory banners you have to collect. There's an encampment. You know, see, these are double sided to make it easier on everyone. These look like forests. Not bad. Very nice artwork. Not quite as good as the artwork, say, on the Battle Lore, but certainly better than the ones in the GMT game. So, one of these is already coming out. That's cool. All right. Wow, I cannot get enough of this game. Great quality, and again, one of the reasons why two players, easy to get to the table, six, oh, don't do that to me. 60 to 90 minutes, ages 14, up. very, you know, low complexity, not really a solitaire game. But again, there's the designer and developer, Richard Borg, really, really, Grateful to him. Let's just take a quick, quick, quick look at these command cards because these look like these are just basic command cards. And a lot of the other games, for instance, the Battle Lore and the expansions to Napoleon, you got command cards and then you got an additional deck that was like buffs. They were called tactician cards, and in Battle Lore they were called lore cards. Good quality, standard size. And these are just your moves. Probe right, advance left. Advance center, advance right, assault right. These are these are your basic standard moves. Forward, good quality. Let's see here. Dress ranks. Okay, that's unique. Counterattack. That's been in these games forever. First strike has been there. For king and country, this is probably a buff for spider leadership. Line command. Volley fire. Okay, so now we're getting into bayonet attack. That standard in Napoleonic. Getting into more of the quality. We're getting more into the era specific cards. Let's just take a quick look at these while we're here. While I got gotcha. you. While you're still interested. Well, this these are not as easy to open up as the first one. Come here, yo. I'm gonna get you. Gotcha. Ambush. Oh, I like the sound of that. The cool thing is these rules are fairly, you know, ex interchangeable between all sorts of different warfare eras, but they do make sure they get the theme. Let's see here. Play this after. Play this card after opponent declares a melee combat, but before dice are rolled, your defending unit will combat first. That's basically a. First strike if the attack unit is not eliminated, retreats it. Or sorry, great. Hold the line. Here we go. Leader initiative. Bonus roll to additional dice. One unit making an attack. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. Oh, no, no, no. Look at this. Whoa, wait a minute. These are command cards. Remember we talking about these buff cards, the tactician cards? Whoa, look at this. Okay. Oh, nice. So this blue, I assume, are American command cards. Very nice. Oh, yes, yes. Now I remember. Someone was telling me about this. And these red ones, 
these are British command cards. These are kind of the buffs for the Brits. Very, 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 very cool. All right. Okay, great. Good. I'm glad I. I almost missed that. I'm glad I didn't. So here's this would be your standard deck. You'd each of you would get a hand, and each player would draw from this deck to move the army. And then these would be go to the British player, buff up what they're doing. These go to the American player, buff what they're doing. Oh, perfect. So you don't even have to buy an expansion. I'm sure expansions will be coming down the line because, as you could see here, this says Command and Colors Tricorn, the American Revolution. Now, this, this implies to me that this Tricorn is going to be a series and the revolution is just one box set we could very much get a french and indian war or a war of 1812 maybe down the road or expansions into the the southern campaign saratoga yorktown because they were not mentioned in the scenario book so looking forward to i mean i'm already sold you you don't have to convince me i'm already sold this is already i'm excited to grab this i'll grab get this to the table this is and they already sticky for it. Whew. Wonderful. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for us over here at Therefore I Geek. You've just been watching Red Ottoman unboxing for Therefore I Geek, folks. This is the dude. You guys be well.